argument. Resellers on YouTube result in jacked up prices at Goodwill and other thrift stores. Yeah, okay, you got me there. But those jacked up prices at Goodwill and other thrift stores mean those Goodwills and those thrift stores are not selling those items, <laughs> which is helping resellers who go to the bins or go to the bag, fill a bag days, things of that nature, where all of those jacked up high priced items are now super cheap and cheaper than they would have been in the first place because Goodwill got too greedy and decided to charge too much. Um, personally, I look at Goodwill and Salvation Army, or I used to, as places where low income families could go and clothe their families. I used to buy my children's clothes at Goodwill and other places, but now i found that I can garage sale, I can buy lots on eBay, I can do a lot of stuff cheaper, so they're losing my business as a mother trying to clothe my child or as somebody trying to buy cheap clothing to wear to work um, because I just can't, I can get better deals as elsewhere. So they're losing out, their fault, and I don't have any bins around me so I can't talk from personal experience. But from what I've seen from other retailers, they're getting some killer, killer deals at the bins, buying stuff for a dollar a pound because Goodwill got a little greedy. So maybe eventually Goodwill will see the error of its ways and bring uh, prices back down. And yes, resellers make sweep in and snag a bunch of good stuff. But Goodwill will actually be making more money and low income families will be able to get better deals and buy good material, good items at a low price. So yeah, you're right. Resellers on YouTube have resulted in thrift stores jacking up prices. But no, you're not right. That's not really hurting us that much. Argument. Resellers are causing more people to want to become resellers. Competition is too fierce. You got me again. You're right. People are watching YouTubers, learning how to resell, learning what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and they're jumping on these platforms and listing stuff and buying stuff. I have bought 17 items since I started on Poshmark last February. And no, I had never heard of Poshmark until I started hearing other resellers talking about listing on Poshmark. So I gave it a try. So that's 17 items that 17 people would not have sold this year had I not have decided to start cross-listing, cross-posting on Poshmark. I just looked through the last 12 of my buyers just quickly on Poshmark and eight out of the 12 have a lot of items listed for sale also. So eight of my last 12 buyers on Poshmark are sellers, people that probably would not be on that platform buying anything if they were not on that platform selling things. I've also bought six items, I think, on Mercari. I didn't go back and look, but six items I bought on Mercari, I'd never heard of Mercari before, before other uh, resellers were talking about Mercari. So that's six items that six people would not have sold on Mercari had I not started selling on Mercari. So yes, competition is out there. Competition is fierce. Competition is fierce in every, every, every job. It's no secret that people want to make money. People that want to work for themselves are going to find ways to make money. It's no secret that you can buy something cheap and sell it for more and make money doing it. I didn't give away that secret. No YouTuber that I know gave away that secret. And quite frankly, the stuff at your Goodwill and the stuff at my Goodwill are completely different. So yes, there is more competition, but there's enough out there for all of us. And the more people we can get using these platforms actively every day being on these platforms, the more likely that they're gonna turn around and buy stuff on these platforms and hopefully from us. You know, I hear other teachers, um, older teachers that might want to transfer into new districts or they're moving, trying to find jobs. 
they complain sometimes that the competition is fierce. There's so many younger, uh, younger people in the marketplace, fresh out of school, that just uh, require a lower pay um, and are just more desirable for some of the people doing the hiring. There's engineers out there that cannot find a good engineering job because the competition is fierce. But what I don't hear, I don't hear those engineers complaining about Caltech teaching new engineers. It's just something we deal with in the job force. New people are gonna come on board. And in order for us to get the job, to do the job, to make the money, we just need to be better. That's all. One argument I hear a lot of is that YouTubers are specifically telling people what to buy, what makes the most money, go out and get this. What I don't hear is what those YouTubers are saying not to buy. I hear all the time people saying, don't buy anything smaller than a size six or a size four. Don't buy this brand. Even things like J. Crew, things like um, Joe's Jeans, True Religion. Sure, they don't sell as fast and maybe for not as high a profit anymore. But there's people out there saying, I don't buy this stuff. And there's people listening and not buying that stuff. And then there's me. I go out and buy that stuff. I have no problem selling a size zero jeans and making 20 bucks on it, and my competition is less because people are out there listening to YouTubers who struggle to sell those items and say not to buy them. So I run with it. And then there's resellers like me. Well, anybody that watches my, ch my channel would see how much or how little I'm making every week and run like crazy and apply at their local McDonald's and find a job there because Caroline's Closet sure as heck isn't the epitome of making a fortune selling online. In fact, I'll tell you how it is. I'll tell you exactly what you can expect, exactly how bad the competition is, and exactly how hard you will have to work to make a dime in this business. And it's true. But quite frankly, you hear a lot of resellers complaining about the slow sales weeks and um, the fierce competition. It's not stopping people from trying it. Now, those people might try it and give up relatively quick when the sales aren't pouring in the way they're hoping. But it's not stopping people from trying it. It's just the American way, especially today. We all want to work for ourselves. We all want to do our own thing. We all want to try the next big thing. And sure, there's a lot of people going to jump into the reselling game. There's also a lot of people that are not going to want to put in the effort. And they're going to run away. And then the business is back to the, uh, those of us that are willing to stick with it. I always wonder about the people that are complaining about resellers killing the reselling game. Are they new to the business? Have they not picked up any tips from watching YouTubers? What's their deal? Because they're obviously on YouTube, on reseller channels, watching the videos and then complaining that these people that are giving out the information that they are watching are killing the reselling game. So maybe they're new to the game and maybe they've picked up a lot of great advice and they're super, super excited, but they don't want anybody else. Shh, don't tell anybody else what you already told me. Don't give away my secrets or your secrets or any of our secrets. But quite frankly, none of it's a secret. Buy low, sell high, make money. Speaking of secrets, is it really a secret that higher quality items sell better than low quality items? And anybody that knows anything about anything can probably touch an item, look at an item, and see how high or low quality it is. Yes, there may be brand names we've never heard of. I've probably picked up a few brand names off of YouTubers. I didn't start watching YouTube until I was about six years into the reselling game. So I was already there. I was already established and I've picked up little bits and pieces and tips and advice, and hopefully I'll pass on some of those bits and pieces and tips and advice. But maybe I'd never heard of Show Me Your Moo Moo. Honestly, I've never found a Show Me Your Moo Moo. But if I go into a thrift store and I see something that's super unique, looks super high quality, you can tell, you know. I don't need to know what the brand is. You just buy it. And the better the stuff, the better it sells. Nobody has to tell you 
exactly what to buy, I could listen to a hundred videos and make a list of a hundred bolos and not find a single one of those brands for months. Is it really, really so bad to just put an idea in somebody's head that if they spend hours and hours in a thrift store going through every piece of clothing, they might find this brand and this brand might do well for them? And finally, the information's out there. We're all just doing our thing. We're all trying to make a buck. The people you're complaining about are just trying to get by the same as you, the same as me. And yes, some people make money on YouTube and they make money sharing the secrets of reselling. I just get on YouTube because I wanna share my life and I want to document what I'm doing for myself just as much as for anybody that may want to watch and may want to see what's going on. And that's no different than the big YouTubers, the ones that have the 20,000 followers and the ones that are constantly showing what sold, what they bought. We all have our secrets. We all keep some stuff to ourselves. I'm more than happy to share what I buy at a thrift store. I'm not as ready to jump up and show you what I bought at my local uh, Walmart clearance or Walgreens clearance. Um, and also, a lot of the complaints I hear pertain to clothing. Well, if you're having trouble selling clothing, find other things to sell. Books, doohickeys, doodads, thingamabobs. I've gotten into so much stuff, and yeah, some of this stuff will sit forever, and some of it I'm just learning, and some of it I will, um, may end up giving up on at some point in time but I have a room full of stuff that has nothing to do with clothing. Only because I'm trying to expand my business, I'm trying to figure out what sells, what I can do to make it sell, and to just do better for myself and my family. And if I can make money on YouTube in the process, heck yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm not rich. I'm not planning on getting rich off of any of you. And not too many YouTubers really are getting rich. And not too many resellers really are getting rich. We're out there trying to make a buck. We're out there trying to feed our families. And we're not giving away any secrets. And you know what? If you convinced one YouTuber, one reseller, to stop sharing on YouTube, there's a hundred and thousands of others, but maybe a hundred other big ones that people actually watch all the time. The information's going to be found. Somebody's going to be sharing it. So let everybody get their piece of the pie. If you work hard enough to post all your YouTube videos, you're making money on YouTube. Obviously not enough to consider it a good living or you wouldn't still be reselling along with YouTubing. So let us all get our piece of the pie. Let us enjoy life. Do what we're doing and share with others. And if you don't want to watch, stop watching. That's all I got to say about that.